Do you want to learn how to make a video streaming app? Well, in this video, I'm going to do exactly that using Node.js. And for those who are new, my name is Abdi, and I'm a software engineer. And on this channel, I make tech tutorials. Now onto the video. Okay, so here's what we're going to be making. It's just one video streaming from our server just to keep things simple. In the network tab, you can see all the different requests being made for the video, each one about one megabyte. And then if I click on random parts of the video here, you'll see that more requests are being made and the video is streaming or sorry, buffering those next few seconds. So first I'm going to go through how does this actually work at a high level? And then I'll go through how to, how to code this step-by-step. Step. If you just want to skip to the code part, I'll put a link in the description. And of course, I'll also put a link to the GitHub so you can download my code and try this out for yourself. Here's our browser and here's our Node.js server. In our site, we've got an HTML5 video element where the source points to the slash video endpoint. First, the video element makes a request to our server and in the headers, gives us a range of bytes it wants from the video. Since it's the beginning of the video, it wants the zeroth byte onward. That's why you see the zero dash right there. Our server will, in response, send part of the video and use the 206 HTTP status because it's returning partial content. In the response headers, we tell what type of data we're returning, which is bytes. It also tells how many bytes in the content length header, what's the range of bytes and the total number of bytes in the video. And lastly, we set the content type header to video MP4 format. Video element will recognize this as an incomplete video because of the headers and will start playing the video with what it's downloaded so far. As the video continues to play, it'll request the next chunk and the next until the entire video is buffered into the player. All right, so now we're in the code portion of the tutorial. So I made a folder and I opened up VS Code. So first thing you do is npm init. And then you can just go through all the defaults. So just press enter. Now we're gonna need two different libraries. First is Express and the other one is Nodemon. Cool. So now the first file we're gonna make is the index.html. And then I'll go through this at a high level. All right, so for the index.html file, I'm gonna make a shell for the page and then we're going to name it HTTP video streaming. And then we're going to add a little bit of style. And lastly, for the important part, uh, I'm going to create the HTML5 video element. And it's got a ID for video player, a width of 200 or 650. And the source is slash video, which is going to come from our server and the type of video slash MP4. Okay. So here's how that looks so far. Um, I'm just referencing the file. There's no server running. And of course the slash video endpoint is not working, but we're going to connect all those in the index.js. All right. So now we're going to write the slash video endpoint. So first off, I downloaded this video, big buck. And that's in the top level of my project. So in the code, what we're going to do is we're going to import FS, which stands for a file system. And that's going to help us actually stream our video by making a, a file stream and then returning that back to our client, the slash video endpoint. So when we go to slash video, it's going to run this function. We need to make sure there's, there's a range header because otherwise we can't tell the client what part of the video we want to send back. So if there's no range, then we send back a 400 status to our client and say it requires the range header. Here's the video path. It's just bigbuck.mp4. And then we find the size of the video. And we're going to use this to tell the client how big the file actually is and also find out if our starting and endpoints make sense. So we're going to parse this range variable that we just got. It's going to look something like this. It's going to have bytes 
equals, and then this is our starting byte number. And then there's this dash, and then there's supposed to be a, usually there's supposed to be a ending bytes that it requests, but it's saying, just give me the rest, but we're gonna be giving it just one megabyte instead. So I set the chunk size to one megabyte, which is about 10 to the six. And then we parse the starting byte from the range header, which is originally a string. So first we replace all the non-digit characters with this empty string. So that removes pretty much everything here, that dash, and we're just left with the number. And with that, I convert it into a number. And then we calculate what is the ending byte that we're gonna send back. So I first add the chunk size, which is one megabyte to the starting, but then that could go past the end of the video size. So in that case, um, if this number is greater than the actual video size, I actually end up returning the video size. And I do that by using this math.min function here. So it takes the minimum of these two. Next, we're gonna start returning, we're gonna create the headers that we're gonna return. So first I calculate the content length, and that's just n minus start plus one. Here's the headers object. So in the content range, first we say what type, the starting byte, dash, the end byte, slash, the actual number of bytes in the video. And then that way, the video player knows like how far along is it based off of the um, the video size itself. This is also another way to say what type of data we're sending back. So I just write accept ranges bytes. And then I put the content length header. So how many bytes we're gonna send back. And lastly, I send back the content type, which is video slash MP4 because it's bigbuck.mp4. Now we're writing the response back. So first we write the HTTP status. I'm doing 206 because that tells the browser that we're sending back partial content. This isn't the entire video. This is just the video from this starting point to the end point. And then we also set the headers. And then this is where all the big magic is. So we use the file system library to create a read stream with the, um, the big buck file and put that there. And then next we can also tell it what's the starting and end bytes we wanna send over. So I just put those as an option uh, in this options object here. And for the very last part, we take this video stream and then it's got a, this variable by itself doesn't really do anything. So we've got to pipe this stream somewhere and we pipe it through this response object, which is what we were given back at the start of the function. So now I'm gonna save this, open up our terminal, run npm start. Okay, now we're back in from. Uh, so I've refreshed this. Now we're actually playing the video and it's streaming. Um, I think it's not showing the video request here because it's been cached. So from what I was testing before, uh, so just do that and then it should show up after, if not there, then right there. Um, so yeah, you can see all the other, you can see all the requests here, 206 for partial content, we're sending back one megabyte and it's only buffered. Uh, and we've only downloaded this small part of the video, but we're actually watching it without having to download the entire video. So it's streaming. All right. So what are the pros and cons of using this approach? Well, for the pros, so first one is that was super simple to implement. Um, all you do is create a file stream and then return it back to the client. It lets you select throughout the video and you can decide pretty much how big of a payload you can send back. I chose one megabyte, but you might choose send the rest of the video or just send like a hundred kilobytes. It's really up to you. But the con is it's because it's so simple, the server and like the video player aren't working together very well. So it'll just request the whatever part of the video you're on. and doesn't really think about uh, or take into account what you've already requested. So yeah, if I actually just go through, you'll see that more and more resources are being requested. 
And if I go backwards, then those same resources are being requested. So I actually ended up requesting about 180 or 204 megabytes when this is actually a 100 megabyte file. So it's a little ironic that you wanted to stream something, but you ended up uh, requesting more data than there actually is. So another step you could take is saving the data on the front end so the video player doesn't request more from the server. Yeah, so that pretty much wraps up the video. Thank you so much for watching until the very end. I really hope this helped you learn something. It was a lot of fun making this project. Don't forget to make sure to like the video. And if you want to see more videos, subscribe to the channel. My name is Abdi, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.